so that I have all the filters clear now. So I'm going to see who has access to this and share it with some people in the system. So I go to this file menu. Now we have gone through most of these things and uh, I click this share option. And now you can see there is no public access. That is people who have logged in, they cannot see it unless I share it. And there is no ex external access at the moment. But I can change it if I want so that anyone who has logged in can see or anybody outside the system can see. Or else I can share this into a group of users or a particular user. So I'm going to share this to a particular use group of users. There is a group of uh, HIV. The HIV access is a group of users in the system configured in the users module. So I'm going to share it with this HIV access group so that everyone in that group can generate this table, can use this table. So when I select that user, it will come up here, user or user group, and I can modify how much access that person or that group has. Currently it's set to can edit and view so that that person can also delete this. But I can restrict it to view only so that he can he or she can view that table only, he can't edit it. So view only, I'm going to close it. Now it's being shared with that group. So if I go back to share, I can see now there's no external access, there's no public access. I can have shared it with only HIV access. Likewise, if you type any user, here, you can share it with them. Dashboard admin, likewise, you can add any number of users. And also, once you create this HIV table or any table, you can have your own interpretations also, add your interpretations. So you can type any comment or an interpretation of this and post it, let's say, please see this table. And you can also tag any person using that sign. You can tag a particular user who is in the system. I'm going to tag promote there. And there are some formatting options also, bold, italic, and you have limited number of emojis here. And I can save that, share that interpretation. So if that person will be notified, that person, if he goes to interpretation, when you go to these interpretations, you might see my interpretation here. So in this table, At the bottom, you can see the interpretation which I have posted. So going back to the session. Next, we'll move on to the word of the day part, the legends. So the word of the day is legends and we are going to see how to add legends to in the, to this created pivot table. For that, I'm going to create a new table, file, new. I'm going to select pivot table. And I'm going to create EPI coverage table. So in my table, I have three data indicators, one for BCG, DPTHVB, HIV3, and OPV indicators, coverage. So I'm going to add those indicators. So I select indicators here, 
and it should be under immunization coverages. So I'm going to select BCG coverage, then DPT, HIV, and HIV third dose coverage, and also OPV3 coverage. So these are my data items for the new table. And my period would be, let's say, last year. Going to select last year. And I want it by districts in the training land. I'm going to select district level in the training land. So my table would be, I need the three data indicators as columns under each district as rows. So my layout, I should bring my org unit into the row and I can remove this uh, period as a filter. Now we will update our table and see. Now we can see the three coverage indicators values for each district. So when you look at this, it's not very easy to understand or comprehend these percentages at a glance. One has to go through the number values 64 and check, think whether this is adequate and go to the next one and think, okay, the this one looks more better better performance likewise you have to go one by one and think to interpret this table but instead if we have a legend for this like a color code so that you can easily see what districts have performed well and what districts are lagging behind that would be easy to comprehend the table so for that we will have a thing called legend so that we will apply it to the values and see a color coded table. Let's see how to apply this legend into our table. So if I go to options and go to the second tab legend. Currently the display legend is not ticked. I'm going to select display legend and you can apply the legend I color into the background or legend color to the text. So I'm going to apply it to the background color so that it would be easy to see. Then next, there is an option to use predefined legend per data item. Predefined means it's already defined and when you have, when you were configuring the metadata. So when you are configuring that indicator, you have applied that legend but we don't know which legends we have applied. So I'm going to select a legend for the whole entire visualization rather than what is configured in the metadata. So here we have a list of legends in the system, configured in the system. I can see that there is a legend called EPI coverage. So I think that would be applicable to this because it's about vaccination coverages. So I'm going to select EPI coverage and update my table. Now you can see, easily see a color coded table with green, dark green, light green, and an orange and a red. So obviously you can think red is bad and green is good. So that is how the legend is configured. We can also see how it is configured by going into our configurations. So there is EPI coverage legend. So if we can see what is there. So there is the red means zero to 70 and it's low coverage. Then there is mid coverage, the orange one, 70 to 80. High coverage 80 to 90 and highest is 90 to 100. So it should be 100. So 
these colors will automatically apply when you select that legend. So now you can see only one dark green and a lot of reds. So you can also fill, sort this and see which districts are doing bad. So you can see obviously the sweet district is doing bad and vegetable district is the best out of the lot. That is how you apply legends. So remember these things are configured beforehand when you are doing the metadata configurations and you have to select the appropriate legend when you are selecting. So that is about legends and I repeat the word of the day is legends. Next, we are going to see the drill down option in pivot tables. So pivot tables in the latest version have been more interactive and you can do certain drilling down within the table. So if, for example, if I select this fish district, I'm going to fish, select the data element of the fish district. And when I click on it, you can drill down the organization unit. Currently it's in fish district, but if I want to see facility level data in the fish district, I can select, I can select this down arrow with facility level in fish district so that you can see data for all the facilities in fish district only. So that is an easy way to drill down and you can do it also within the dimensions, but this is one easy way. So similarly, you have the go up part, but now when you go up, you won't see the other districts. You will see only fish district. So that is the drilling down. And I want to go back to all my districts. to get my previous table back. So that is about drilling down and going up. So this is a new feature with interactions so that you can drill down and go up. Right, so I'm moving back to my presentation now. So we did legends and drilling down. And uh, this was the legend we used, the API coverage. And the next part will be about the aggregation type. That is also an option which we kept for the last session so we will see how to use this last value aggregation type in our data so this is one of the aggregation types which we can configure also in the system or you can use it within the pivot table so you know there are a few aggregation types like some average count and last value is also one of them so this is also important when we are when we when we want to know current value not the total aggregated value current value for example plhiv currently on art that is patients living with hiv and who are currently on art we can see that in the table using the last value so rather than aggregating values for the last few months I want to know how many are currently on this ART. So I will show you how to do that in the demonstration. So first we will see how that form is configured. So if you go to data entry, the HIV monthly. So I will go to February.
So here you can see PLHIV currently on ART, that is for February month, you have 721 female, sorry, males and 1036 males. So the total currently on HRT, sorry, ART on uh, February 21 is the total of these two, that is 1757. But if you move on to the next month, March, you can see the data entered is 690 and 1034 for the month of March. So that is in, when we come to the March, there are 1724 patients on ART. So if we use aggregation type sum here in a table, they will add up all the months. That is February and March also, or maybe previous months before months, depending on what we have selected for the period. So let's see this in the pivot table. What will happen? I'm going to do a new table here. My data would be a data element, HIV. PLHIV currently on ART. I'm going to select that. So that is my data element. And my period would be, let's say, last 12 months. Okay, it's by default last 12 months. And my organization unit, I'm going to select uh, animal region. And health center group. And I want my organization units as columns and I can put my period as a filter. So for the last 12 months, I will see how many are currently on ART. Let's see, let's update and see. So this would be the table I will get. So this value is actually an aggregate value for the last 12 months. But I want the value, the last value, that is last month or last month, how many patients were on ART. So I'm going to do that using options, aggregation type, last value. So if I update this, now I can see how many are there in the each facility currently on ART. That is the use of using this aggregation type in the pivot table. So if you want, if somebody wants an average also, you can see an average here. So average for the last 12 months. So that is the demonstration on aggregation types and legends. And uh, now we will have a we have enough time to do the four exercises. That is exercise five, six, seven, and eight. We did it at a stretch. And now you can practice all four exercises and uh, we will be here supporting you if there are any questions. So please practice those exercises. And uh, after that, we can conclude the session if there are no questions. So we will have uh, half an hour for all four exercises. 
are there any questions to ask? Uh, hi, Pramil. There's a request on the chat to repeat the, the drill down functionality. So uh, just, uh, I mean, after some time or uh, uh, after the break, maybe you can just demonstrate that again, please. Right. Right. Right, uh, Sabab, I will, uh, maybe I'll do it. I'll give some time for the exercises and uh, after 15 minutes or so, I will do a demonstration again on the uh, Maybe we will have 